Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode of The Art Bros, the show that talks about art in a non-formal way so that you can start talking about art too. As with me, with me as always is Fancy Dave. Hey people. And we're very happy because we have a very special guest with us today from the art blog Sardle. We have the senior writer uh, whose name is Clayton Schuster. Clayton, hello. Hey, hello guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Clay- Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Clayton has a, he's working on a book right now called Bad Blood. The 27 baddest, bloodiest, and sexiest art history rivalries. Clayton, we know you came to talk about some of these spicy rivalries. Can you please tell mm-hmm. the people what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, totally. Uh, what we have for you today is... Uh, the rivalry kind of quarrel between uh, Caravaggio, one of art's biggest names, the heavy hitter from art history, and Baglione, who barely anybody outside of an art history class has heard of. <laughs> I honestly have never heard of him until you brought up this yeah. idea. <laughs> so, yeah, and that, that's really, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so sad, but it makes for really good uh, drama. Made him a really good drama. So, um, uh, just spell it out for us. You know what what happened? Like, this is this is before Twitter wars. There was this. So. Mm. Oh yep. man, there's like some shit talking in this story. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right into it. Uh, can you just start us out for us, uh, Clayton, please? Yeah, totally. Uh, basically, the setting we have here is Rome in the 17th century and there has been a huge cultural shift in art and more than ever before you have like the artiste you have the, uh, the you artiste. have the person who is you have like the uh, this economy of art going on where some people are hyper famous and mm-hmm. some people are just kind of middling, and then there's all these people roaming around, you know, who want to try and break into the game. It's kind of like, kind of like uh, working in tech now. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So bef- before Silicon Valley, there was this. Paint. Right. Genesis. Right. Yeah. This, is, this is like Rome is like the Silicon Valley of the art world <laughs> uh, at this time. Yeah, they should so, make a sitcom about that. There's all this money, and people <laughs> try to get their slice of it. That's a good HBO show right there. <laughs> Yeah, so there are all these artists uh, trying to get their money, um, and yep. Caravaggio and uh, Baglioni are two of them, and they're about to go into conflict. <laughs> <laughs> so you pretty much right. have like a hater and the star getting in, into... So, okay, I got you. I'm with you so far, Clayton. Take it away. All right, cool. So Caravaggio, like we said, uh, primo talent, and there's this kind of middling artist roaming the streets of, uh, of Rome just kind of hating him and that is Baglione uh, and Caravaggio has all these really high quality paintings to his name and Baglione is just trying to figure out how to how to break in and so one day he realizes that uh, he has this really strong moral objection to this uh, to this piece of art that Caravaggio makes that he just, it's kind of a it's kind of a a one off piece he doesn't really care about it it's called uh, love conquers all and it features this uh, this cherub, little right? uh, this uh, this little naked angel sitting on top of all of these all of these uh, musical instruments which you know the the viewer of the time is going to look at them and they're going to think oh these musical instruments mean uh the heaven the heavenly realm and the earthly realm and so the painting saying uh the painting saying something like you know love's better than pretty much anything else out there uh baglione takes a look at it and he thinks that there's a, a different message that he wants to put forward so he creates a painting called uh, Divine Love where an angel is separating the devil from uh, the little kind of naked angel that was sitting on top of sitting uh, on top of those instruments. This is the first version of the painting, right? Right, right. There were two versions. This is the first one. Uh, 
So they, we, we have that, that yeah. Cupid. So he takes that Cupid, uh, that, that uh, cherub looking character, and uses it in his own mm-hmm. work. Totally. Yeah, okay. it's a total slap in the face. Okay. Artistically. All right. <laughs> Continue, please. And so, so Baglione shows it off at kind of like a the equivalent of a artist farmer's market in Rome. Uh, one of Caravaggio's friends uh, sees it, goes up to Baglione, and starts critiquing him, telling him all these little these little artistic tricks that might make it better. And so, Baglione kind of grins it and bears it goes home, makes a second one, only this time we're in the first one, you kinda have the, the devil character off to the mm-hmm. off to the side. You don't really you don't really see him. In the second Divine Love, you see the devil's face, and this time it's Caravaggio. Oh shots fired <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh and there's more yeah, to the <laughs> there's even more going on, right? Like um the angel that's on the ground is supposed to be modeled after one of Caravaggio's models, right? That uh, he's basically implying they were in a homosexual relationship, which oh yeah, oh, at yeah. the time, and which is a uh, capital offense. Yeah, in, under the Pope's capital reign. Yeah, yeah, uh, not not a real not a real good time to to be uh, saying that's going on. For <laughs> <some>. <laughs> Especially for a high-profile artist and whatnot. And so, uh, did he make a whole new painting, or did he edit the one that he had before? No, it was a whole new painting. Oh man! Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so, yeah, and where where things really start to to get serious, because Caravaggio Caravaggio is pissed, but he's just kind of like, well, you know, whatever. Baglione isn't isn't this this artist that I have to compete with, except. Caravaggio, or I'm sorry, uh, Baglione takes uh, his Divine Love painting and takes it to the uh, the person who who commissioned Caravaggio to do uh, Love Conquers All, and ends out getting this third commission to do an altarpiece for a church that Caravaggio really wanted so Mm -hmm. he takes yeah he takes this parody that I mean for all intents and purposes that's trying to to imply Caravaggio is guilty of a crime that could get him killed get him sentenced to death yeah and he ends out taking this huge commission that Caravaggio wanted so I mean you want to talk about shots fired this is like all the guns in the world going (laughs) off (laughs) after this for Caravaggio nice I think there's like even more insults. Uh, I think at some point, uh, Baglione he he like received a gold medal from one of his patron, like a gold chain, right? So that would imply yeah, yeah, he, that, he like this... did a very big artistic achievement, which just pisses off Caravaggio even yeah. more. It's like if that internet troll that well, he... was like pissing off a celebrity got recognized for something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like if they got the Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good job, sir. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, great for the troll, but you know when you're the one who who caused that to happen, that's kind of that's not good. <laughs> but so the gold chain was actually for uh, Baglione's parody of Caravaggio's original painting, uh-huh. and that it had, having a gold chain as an artist was really like having having a, a medal. Uh, artists wore them around in self-portraits. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was nothing. It was nothing to to snub your nose at or anything. But so, yeah, Baglione, but... he gets the church commission to do a. Uh, I believe it's a. I believe it's a a crucifixion scene, uh, and completely botches it. It Ooh. becomes one of the the biggest. The biggest name uh, projects in Rome. Everybody's talking about how Baglione bagged this big commission, oh, and they're man. all like, "How? How's he? How's he going to do that? How's he going to? How's he going to? You know, a, compete? He got a little too uh, big for his britches there, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He it got it was so bad that uh, less than like a hundred, two hundred years later, the church the church destroyed it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And recommissioned so, a new altarpiece. Yeah, so they, 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 they were just like, like, oh, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right. <laughs> oh, and we're not even touching on so, the fact that uh, Caravaggio was basically a crazy man, too. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, he Caravaggio got all of his Caravaggio had had this uh, crew of which actually Baglione was a part of it for a while. They called them they're called now the Caravaggisti and they they'd go from they basically go on bar crawls around Rome. Uh, you know, stopping periodically, a little more than periodically at the brothels, <laughs> and just they'd uh, they just really live it up. The pit stop. Uh, so Caravaggio gets his Caravaggisti together, and when uh, when Baglione is making his grand debut of this uh, of this crucifixion altarpiece, they all show up, oh. and. You know, nobody nobody's pulling any punches at at this at this art show. They're oh, just man. all ragging on him, laughing out loud oh. at him, throwing insults. He brought his squad. Uh, that's oh, that's yeah. messed up. He brought his crew. <laughs> he brought his crew. <laughs> yeah, and they they just tore him apart. Oh. And no question, Baglione knew he had just he had he had missed he missed the boat on making this. Uh, <laughs> making this a, a good thing for himself. So Baglione, in turn, thinks to himself, I have more cards to play in this game. And what he does is he goes out, he doubles down on uh, accusing Caravaggio of homosexuality and starts telling everybody uh, that he knows that Caravaggio has a bottom out there somewhere. I think the Italian word for it at the time was a bardassa. Mm. And so he's going around, you know, just, you know, going from the bar bar to bar and going, you know, like, hey, doesn't Caravaggio have a bottom? And he's out and he goes and tells people at the next bar. He just, like, mentions and, it, like, in passing to people, like, yo, I heard this, and, like, goes to the next one. Yeah, I heard this. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, Caravaggio knows exactly who's saying this. And, you know, again, big deal at the time because... Caravaggio could be uh, put to death for it. Wow. So, of course, you know, Caravaggio being the most famous painter pretty much in the Western world at the time, uh, everybody wanting a piece of him, you know, nobody in power who could actually put that order out there to put him to death, none of them cared. Right. Uh, you know, they, they were like, Caravaggio can go and, and diddle around with whoever he wants. That's that's not our problem, just as long as he keeps painting. But Caravaggio, on the other hand, uh, he was pretty incensed that anybody would dare do that to him. <laughs> that anybody would, would try to play him at his own game. And so... Is this where, he, crazy, is this where crazy Caravaggio yeah. starts coming out? Oh yeah, yeah. Car- Caravaggio's taking off his earrings. He's, he's, <laughs> he's going. He's putting his baby down. <laughs> yeah, he he's gonna go ham. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> so he, in turn, uh, goes with a fairly. This is where this is where kind of like the social media of the time uh, comes into play because what he does is he writes a couple of poems about about uh baglione and puts him out there and oh you know you hear that (laughs) he wrote a couple of poems about the guy and you go well why do i care these these weren't like these were like epic rap takedowns nice of baglione (laughs) you know it's like it's like what what eminem or jay-z might write you know you're like like, 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 nwa versus you know but it's just like ice cube versus those guys yeah (laughs) Oh yeah, 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 and he uh, he you know he has them nailed up all over town. He wow. sends them you know everywhere, anywhere that a physical piece of paper could be. He had this poem go to, so where everybody could read what he had to say about uh, Baglione, which basically amounted to the guy couldn't get it up, and he uh. Uh, and he couldn't satisfy his wife. Which you know, come on, right? Mm-hmm. That's cool. So. Baglione, his feelings are a little hurt. He takes Caravaggio to court. Uh, these these poems are kind of a they're kind of a, an epidemic in Rome at the time. Uh, so much so that 
the crime, the punishment for the crime, is to be put into the into the papal galleys, into the to be a, a rower in the wow. papal navy uh, for life. And I mean, that was, basically, you rowed so much that your heart gave out and you died. See, so it was a backwards way. Yeah, see, they need to do that for cyberbullying. <laughs> that would stop it. Hundred <laughs> percent. Just make the guy swim until they croak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So, so they're in court now, basically, right? Because uh... yep they they have they have their trial. Uh, Caravaggio basically admits to what he did uh, in so many words, uh, but in kind of a a cool, suave kind of way where they can't really pin it on him. But uh, the thesis of his argument is that Baglione is such a uh, a terrible painter <laughs> that that nobody likes him in Rome. <laughs> That's fantastic. And you know again he's got Caravaggio has all of these power players on his side up to and including the pope which it can't be emphasized enough just how how heavy a weight the pope's word carried at this time. Yeah, friends uh, in very you know, high got places. Got, yeah. yeah, the the highest up. I mean, God basically that's, was his friend. That's like if Beyonce was on your side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you could have Beyonce come and be a character witness, it would it would <laughs> almost be almost carry that weight. Right. But so Caravaggio gets off. Uh, Baglione basically gives up painting, and he goes. Uh, he goes and and uh, runs a, a school for painting and writes books for the rest of his life. And the most famous book that he wrote oh, I love this uh, is actually a, it's a history of art that's a ripoff of Vasari's Lives of the Artist. The guy just couldn't quit. <laughs> he rips off Vasari's Lives of the Artist, and the most famous section from it is the one on Caravaggio where he's praising the guy. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, did did we mention that uh, Baglioni basically copied like uh, Caravaggio's style in order to make like you know a living for himself? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious when you look at the paintings. Yeah, yeah, yeah the chiaroscuro, uh, chiaroscuro, chiaroscuro, chiaroscuro. Yeah, and the tenebrism. All the all of the Caravaggisti were trying to keep up with with uh, Caravaggio's innovations, and Baglione just he took it too far, mm. and he never recovered. <laughs> Sorry, so moral of the story is watch out where you spit your hate because that might come back to bite you in the commission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, and as <laughs> a. <laughs> and I just. Just uh, so. Just to add, like, it, this isn't directly connected to this rivalry, but I always found it very fascinating how uh, Caravaggio died. Uh, just. Uh, do, do you want to tell the audience very quickly? <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, yeah. So Caravaggio, as has been mentioned, he 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 likey the brothel and he likey the prostitute. All right. Uh, most most of his uh, paintings actually were uh, his famous ones with that uh, with the uh, with that woman with the really soft face and angular kind of nose, uh, like uh, Judith Judith and Halop and uh, Judith beheading Holofernes. Yes. Uh, that is all the same person, uh, and that person was a, a prostitute, his favorite prostitute. Uh, and she had a pimp named Ranucchio, and at some point, the, the record on this is a little fuzzy, but uh, at some point, Ranucchio either felt like Caravaggio was taking up too much of her time, like maybe she could get uh, better, uh, like draw a better fee from a from a different crowd or something. But uh, for whatever reason, Caravaggio felt like Ranucchio was keeping uh, him from his favorite muse. And so he goes up to Ranucchio while Ranucchio is playing tennis. Uh, so it goes <laughs> and he stabs him in the dick till Ranucchio dies. Oh, damn! <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we said, the, a crazy Caravaggio. So see, like, the thing is, as an art history student, you hear, oh, yeah. Caravaggio killed a pimp, but mm -hmm. you never hear the specifics. 
<laughs> I love the tennis no, part. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I, I just I just like thinking, you know, he he's walking by, you know, kind of kind of upset trying to think about some other things and he sees Renukio playing tennis and he's like, "No, it's going to happen right." Yeah. Now. It's just, sorry, Renukio. Yeah, this is a guy that would sometimes like sleep fully armed and carry a sword around with him in public. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, I think there's like a speculation that he he might have been more aggressive, like to add more to whatever mental problems he might have had already, like the lead salts in the paint might have like <laughs> aggravated his condition. Damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, you can't deny, the guy was a good artist. At least. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, oh yeah. Damn uh, good artist. Thank you for sharing that story with us, Clayton. That was. That's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> the rivalries, and we look forward to hearing the the rest of the rivalries in your book. Um, so, do you want to tell? Do you yeah. want to? you want to tell people about um, maybe how they can sign up to get some sneak previews or something like that? Yeah, for sure. If uh, if you go to Sartle, that's S A R T L E dot com. Uh, if you just kind of wait around for a second, there's a lot of pretty things to look at, so that should be easy. Uh, but if you just wait around for a second on the homepage, a little bubble will pop up, and uh, you can sign up there with your email and uh, get more news and like a sneak preview and all that good stuff. All right, cool. Thank you so much. And uh, where can the people find you, uh, Mr. Schuster, sir? <laughs> Well, the place I am mostly right now is on Twitter, uh, at Make Art Great Again. Uh, if you search Trump Art History, uh, there's some funny stuff there. You won't be disappointed. All right. Thanks. So uh, thank you very much, Clayton, for being mm-hmm. with us. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. We hope that you enjoyed the rivalry between Carvaggio and Baglioni. And uh, we hope to have Clayton back soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, Thank you again, Clayton. Say goodbye to the people, please. Thank you, guys, and good night, everyone. And uh, good night from the Art Bros. We'll see you next time.